One of the main assumptions of the Black-Scholes option pricing model is that the returns of an asset or stock are normally distributed, and that the future underlying prices therefore are log-normally distributed. In reality, the extremes or tails of the distribution curve are often fatter than a normal distribution would suggest, meaning extreme moves happen more often than a normal distribution would suggest. This leads to something called the volatility smile. A distribution curve displays how some set of data is distributed across a range of values. When we talk about a normal distribution, this is the type of distribution curve we are talking about. This is actually the standard normal distribution, with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And this is an example of a log normal distribution, with a mean of 1 and a standard deviation also of 1. Log normal distributions eliminate the possibility of negative values, and so are more suitable to describe the price of an asset than normal distributions, which can be negative. Returns in a given time period, though, can of course be negative. For example, the price of an asset could increase by 10% in a day, giving returns of plus 10%, or it could decrease by 10% in a day, giving returns of negative 10%. If returns did follow a normal distribution, and the Black-Scholes model perfectly modelled the real world, the fair IV level for each strike in a particular expiration would be the same, meaning a flat line for implied volatility. For now though, just be aware that the implied volatility figure is rarely the same for each strike in a particular expiration, but instead will often create a smile shape when plotted on a chart. Here we have a chart of the implied volatility for each strike price in a given expiration of an asset that has a current price of $100. The blue line on this chart illustrates what it would look like if implied volatility were the same for each strike price. For every strike price all the way from $50 to $150, the implied volatility is 50% in this example. However, in the real world, larger moves can happen more often than is predicted if we assume a normal distribution, due to the fatter tails of the distribution mentioned earlier. Many market participants, that is, traders buying and selling options, are aware of this, and so they tend to price options towards the extremes of the curve higher to account for this. This leads to a smile in the implied volatilities of each strike as we see here in red. Let's look at a live example on Deribit. This is the Bitcoin option chain for the 27th of August 2021 expiration. We'll use the implied volatility from the mark price columns to study the implied volatilities of each strike. The underlying price is just over $44,000 here, so the $44,000 strike is at the money. The implied volatility of this strike is 85.94%. If we move down in strike price, which is up in the table, we can see that the implied volatility increases the further away from the at the money strike we move. The same is true if we move up in strike price, or down in the table. So as we move away from the at the money strike in either direction, the implied volatility increases. If we plot these values in the same way we displayed in the previous theoretical example, we get this chart. As expected, we get a form of smile in the implied volatilities, meaning the options further away from the current price are more expensive than if they were all priced using the same implied volatility figure as the at the money strike. Traders are making adjustments compared to the Black-Scholes model to account for the model's limitations. This particular smile is not symmetrical though, as well as traders accounting for the fatter tails, supply and demand still plays its usual role in how different options are priced, so there is no rule that says what shape this curve needs to be. If traders are fearful of a large decrease in underlying prices, they may push up the price of puts relative to calls. Conversely, if traders are convinced of an upcoming increase in price, they may bid calls up instead. To describe the shape of the curve mathematically, Traders may use skew and kurtosis. Skewness and kurtosis are measures of how a distribution differs from a normal distribution. Skew measures the symmetry of the distribution curve, while kurtosis measures how fat the tails are. While we will be coming back to some of this in later sections, the descriptions of distributions given in this course are by no means complete, 
so if you're still feeling confused about distributions, I would highly recommend doing some further reading about them online. There is plenty of free information available on them. It's only high school level maths, so you don't need to be a genius to understand it, and it's well worth getting at least a basic grasp of what they are and how they work, because it's useful knowledge for more than just trading. This volatility smile phenomenon is not isolated to the world of cryptocurrency. Here we have an option chain I've pulled from Tastyworks for SLV, the silver ETF. The current underlying price is about $21.83, so the $22 strike is at the money. The implied volatility of the $22 call option is 24.61%, and we can see in both directions that the implied volatility percentage increases as we move further away from the current price. If we plot these values in the same way as previously, we get this chart. As you can see, the same behaviour can be seen that creates the volatility smile, instead of having flat IV across all strikes. The curve also looks more symmetrical than in the Bitcoin example, forming a smile shape. With many different implied volatility levels on the same expiration date, you may be asking yourself which IV is correct or which one should be used when discussing volatility. Obviously, if you are discussing a specific option, you can use the implied volatility of that option. More generally though, when people talk about current volatilities or the implied volatility of a specific expiration, they are usually referring to the implied volatility level of the at the money strikes. This would be the $44,000 strike price in the previous Bitcoin example, or roughly 86% and the $22 strike in this SLV example, or roughly 24.6%. When you want to look at all the volatilities together though, it's possible to see them in the option chain, but this is far from ideal if you want to see the shape of the curve, whether it's a symmetrical smile shape or skewed. It's often more beneficial to chart the curve as we have done in these examples. It's possible to do this yourself using the API, either directly or by using a tool like CryptoSheets. There are also web-based tools that do all this work for you and display the volatilities for each expiration, as well as many other useful charts and statistics. One such tool is Genesis Volatility, which you can find at gvol.io. With Genesis Volatility, you can display these charts by strike price or by delta if you prefer. This data from Genesis Volatility is also now embedded directly into the Deribit user interface on the Options Data page. In summary, while it's not always necessary to know all the maths behind it, it is useful to be aware that implied volatility levels are unlikely to be flat across all strikes on a given expiry. They will often create a smile or skewed smile shape, with the lowest point usually being with the at the money strike or close to it. It's also useful to be aware of the possible reasons for this. This can include traders compensating for fatter tails in the distribution of returns in the underlying asset, but also the current sentiment affecting supply and demand for calls and puts.